Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be unboxing the Warcry Splintered Fang. Here we go, the Splintered Fang, another great looking warband for Warcry. And I'm super excited to get these open and see what they look like. From the pictures, they just look amazing. If we look at the back, we can see some really cool looking miniatures. And they kind of got an ancient Greek, a little bit Sparta-esque. And then certainly look like assassins with their poison blades. They look pretty fast. So it'd be good to see the fighter types and their abilities to see what kind of tactics we can play with these. So I paid uh, £27 for these and the RRP is 30 I'll put a link in the description below to Element Games where you can pick these up and usually up to 20% discount on all Warhammer and other tabletop skirmish games and I can highly recommend. Most of the links I put down are affiliate links and they don't cost you anything. In fact, they're gonna save you money and I get a small commission for only sales which help develop the channel and I'm really grateful for that support. Right, so with that all taken care of, let's get this awesome box open and see what's inside. And just like always on these Warcry Warband boxes, they usually put the the Warband room mark on the flap, which is really good, I think. And there we go. There's the splintered fang room mark. And rather than just putting all the sprues and the book in the in the box, they put a nice little tray, which is good. And in the box, we've got our instruction booklet. And just like all the Warcry warbands, the assembly's quite, quite unique on some of them. These are pretty straightforward though, but I like how they use the, the different armor and, and kind of chain mail to hide the joins. It's very clever how they do it. This Mitch is going to be great, the ones with the the snakes. Yeah, so these don't look too too complicated. The Corvus Cabal were, were pretty fiddly to put together, but these look quite straightforward. And it'd be good to see the different variations of weapons we can choose. And we usually get a paint guide. Which I'm not seeing in the book. That might be on the cover. So we're not getting a paint guide here. Just looks like we're going to get the 10 miniatures, which includes the serpents, 10 fighter type cards, and the ability cards. If you are looking to paint these, I'm sure there's plenty of guides online. Um, I'll be painting them up over the next few weeks and months, so look out for a, a video on my channel where I go through exactly how I do that. But that's the instruction book. Now let's look at the sprues. Here's the net, the different blades, I like the trident. The armour looks really cool. That's the first one, and then we've got the double sprue here. And we've got some really nice looking shields with the emblem on. The snake's pretty bad, bigger than I thought actually. Let's get close on that. That's going to be quite big. That's great. When you compare the size of that to the miniature, that's pretty huge. Ah, and here's the serpents. They look cool. Really good. And the whip. So lots of different weapons here. We've got spears, tridents, daggers, blades, snakes, whip, net. So really good variation. We've got our bases. And the cards. And here's the box. Get rid of that. Let's take a look at the cards. So we get lots of the ability cards, one in English and then all the other different languages. So we don't need those, we put those to one side and just focus on the English one. 
and then we're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten fighter type cards and two duplicate cards. Okay, so let's take a look at the different fighter types. And we get quite a few here for the splintered fang. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten different fighter types. And we get ten models, including the serpents, in the pack. So we've got these guys, the clear bloods. So clear blood with shield. So imagine they're going to have that extra toughness. The clear blood. These have all got like daggers and blades. We've got a venom blood with blade and barbed whip. A venom blood with dueling blades. We've got Venom Blood with Spear and Shield, a Venom Blood with Barbed Whip, and a little shield, it looks like, a Pure Blood, the Serpents, a Serpent Caller, and a True Blood. So they look really great. So it looks like we've got some variation on the weapons there with this one and with this one. So it'd be good to see how they go together. So let's take a look at the individual fighter type cards and we'll work through all their stats and abilities. And first we've got our clear blood with shield. So we'll start from here and work our way across. So it looks like we've just got one option here. So that's a clear blood with shield and he's got his like short sword or, or dagger and 70 points. We've got the warband rune mark there and he also gets an ability which is great for 70 points. So it'd be good to see what that is. So it looks like the shield, but we'll find out in a second. So movement of four, he can take 10 damage Toughness 4, which is pretty good for such a low points. He's got his sword, so it's a range of 1. He can make 2 attacks with a strength 3, dealing 1 to 3 damage. And let's take a look at those abilities. So it looks like every member of the warband on a double gets a poisoned weapon ability, and on a quad, paralyzing venom. So this is interesting. Any model can use the can actually use a quad ability for this warband which is great so let's look at these two so the double poisoned weapon until the end of this fighter's activation the strengths characteristic of attack actions made by this fighter count as being higher than the target's toughness characteristic okay so that's going to help get some extra attacks in there and um, raise it up so we can start looking at more four to fives to actually inflict some damage. Okay, so that's gonna help us with our attack rolls there. So even though we're only rolling two, if we wanted to with the double, we could increase our, our probability of getting a hit there. So that's a good one. And on a quad, we've got Paralyzing Venom. Until the end of this fighter's activation, add the value of this ability to the damage points allocated by critical hits from attack actions made by this fighter. And after each attack action made by this fighter, roll a dice. On a 5 to 6, until the end of the battle round, the target fighter cannot make move actions or disengage actions. Okay, so this is pretty cool. So as long as we get a critical hit there, we can add the value of the ability to the damage points of that critical hit. And on top of that, if we roll a dice for each attack action, roll a dice, on a 5 or 6, the target fighter is going to be paralyzed I guess from those poison blades and can't disengage so he can't move can't disengage he's almost frozen to the spot so that's really cool and we'll see how this quad ability works with some of the other members which would be good good to see and we've also got this one which is on a double a fanged buckler ah so it's different to the shield so let's this is a new one pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a dice on a three to four allocate one damage point to that fighter on a five to six allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability so for a double that's pretty tough so if you're getting a five or a six for that double and you roll a five to six you can allocate five or six points damage points that's a lot for, for a double that's quite huge so the fanged buckler Ah, so this would be good. So I, I certainly think if you've got options to include those shields, having a few of these could be pretty good. And for 70 points, they're doing quite a lot there. 
so that's our clear blood with shield. And next we have our clear blood. And for 65 points, we don't get the extra um, ability there, but we get movement four, can take 10 damage and toughness three. We've got the blade, so it's up close, range of one, can make four attacks with a strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. So nothing too exciting going on there. Pretty good to have 10 damage and four attacks, so that's not bad. And let's check out the abilities again for the clear blood. And the clear blood is going to get our double poisoned weapon and the quad paralyzing venom. So that's the clear blood. And next we've got our Venom Blood, and this Venom Blood, this particular miniature design is going to come with two different fighter types. So we've got the Venom Blood with barbed, with blade and barbed whip, and the Venom Blood with dueling blades. So let's check out the fighter type cards here. So both the same, both 85 points. Um, we've got the same movement, so they're a little bit faster. They've got movement of 5, can take 10 damage, and toughness 3. So they're both the same there. And our first one with the dueling blades, we've got the sword, which is a range of one, can make four attacks, which is nice. Strength three, dealing two to four on a crit. So we've got four attacks, dealing two or four. Not bad for only 85 points. Look, these are shaping up to be pretty, pretty tough. So this is good. And here we've got two different weapons. So we've got the venom blood with blade and barbed whip. So the blade is much like the previous one, so we've got a range of one, only three attacks this time. Um, strength of three, dealing two to four on a crit. And then we've got the barbed whip, so range of three, so that's nice to get that extra bit of range here. And can make three attacks, strength three, dealing one to two on a crit. So a little bit of options there, and this one certainly looks like the coolest miniature, and would be definitely worth having that on. The warband roster especially with those that extra range but again we'll have to compare the others to see what the range is like whether we need to add this one in so that's our venom blood with dueling blades and venom blood with blade and barb whip oh we didn't look at the abilities okay so no extra abilities here uh, so we're looking at the standard double poisoned weapon and quad paralyzing venom now we've got the Venom Blood with Barbed Whip. And these models seem to be getting cooler as we get on. That looks great. And he's got the ability there, which is nice. So let's go through the stats. So we've got 110 points, movement of four. So not as fast as the Venom Blood that we just saw earlier, but they still got the damage of 10 and a little bit tougher, toughness five. Uh, quite a lot tougher actually so two points tougher than the other venom blood um, range of three dealing three attacks on the strength four and we're just dealing one to two on a crit so not a huge amount of damage if it hits but we do get that extra range and we've got an ability so let's look at all the abilities now so again like all the members of the warband we've got on a double poisoned weapon and on a quad paralyzing venom and here we've got the fanged buckler which again is a great ability and i think once you've got this toughness and strength so high and you're dealing three attacks that's going to be really good to use on this guy for sure right so that's our venom blood with barbed whip here's our venom blood with spear and shield and for 135 points, we're getting a movement four, can take 10 damage on a toughness five. We've got the extra ability, which is great. And so this is a spear or trident. And we're looking at a range of two, three attacks, strength four, dealing two to four damage. So again, pretty tough. It's not, not bad damage there that can be dealt and with that extra little bit of range. And then with the abilities, We've got the poisoned weapon on a double, the quad paralyzing venom, and another double. We got the fanged buckler. So that's our venom blood with spear and shield. 
Right, with the venom bloods taken care of, now we're on to our pure blood. So the pure blood, he's coming with two blades there and 125 points. Movement four, a little bit extra damage, so he can take 12. Toughness four, he's got his blade, so it's one range, can make four attacks, strength four, dealing two to four. So pretty average, but we do get this new ability. So let's have a look at that. So again, double poisoned weapon, quad paralyzing venom, but we've got this new one on a triple, which is called Relentless Killer. A fighter can use this ability only if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. This fighter makes a bonus attack action. Okay, so once he's taken an enemy down, he's motivated, he gets the rage and can make another attack as a bonus. So on a triple, that's not bad. I was hoping for a little bit more, I thought, on this model, but that's okay. I think we, to get three abilities is pretty cool. So that's our pure blood. Okay, I'm leaving the coolest model till last. So now we've got the true blood, who's the leader of the warband. And so he's coming in at 180 points with a movement of four, can take 20 damage with a toughness four. He's got the leader's rune mark there, and he's got his trident spear, so he's got a range of two, can make four attacks at strength four, and he can do two to five damage on a crit. And he's also got this net here, so I'm guessing that might tie into the ability. So let's take a look. But he's looking pretty good, pretty tough, can take a few hits, and deals quite a bit of damage with four attacks and a range of two. So that's pretty, pretty nice for 180 points. Right, so our leader's got the double, like everyone else, poison weapon, the quad, paralyzing venom, and now we've got the... Ah, here we go, so it's only on a double as well. Ensnaring net. Pick a visible enemy fighter within three inches of this fighter. Until the end of the battle round, that enemy fighter cannot make move actions or disengage actions. Okay, so for a double, you can really tangle up the opposition here, and they have to be within three inches of this fighter. So that's not that's not too bad. That's quite a bit of range actually. So as long as they're in three inches, you can tie them up so they can't disengage or move for the end of that battle round. So that's a great ability for a double. And I could see that being used quite a lot. Keep an enemy pinned down while the others snap away at them. I think that's really interesting and a really good good ability for a double. So awesome. That's our leader, the True Blood. Now we've got our serpents, so at 65 points, these serpents are pretty swift, they've got 6 movement, can take 8 damage, uh, obviously they're not going to be that tough, but toughness 2, and they're going to be biting with a range of 1, they can make 5 attacks, that's a lot, with a strength 3 dealing 1 to 4, so for 65 points to make 5 attacks and with that range, that's pretty awesome, and they've got a ability room mark, so let's see what that is. Okay, so that rune mark for the serpents is the beast rune mark, which we see here. And in the core book, which comes with the catacomb set and the original Warcry set, it says here that the beast rune mark means that the fighters with any of the following rune marks cannot move through doors. So if they've got the beast move, uh, room up, they can't move through doors, but they can move through archways. So it's just the doors that are going to hold them up. So I think in the dungeon catacomb setting, that's going to affect them quite a lot. But out on the, the open, on the upper ground, they're going to have a lot more movement, as I guess you would expect. I can't find any other references to the beast in this book. So if you know of any other rules or effects that that room up has, please let me know in the comments. So I'm pretty sure they're still gonna get the double and the quad abilities, but if that's not the case, please let me know in the comments. And that's our serpents. Right, and our final and perhaps the coolest looking miniature in this warband is the serpent caller. And there he is. This is such a great looking miniature. And these snakes are a lot bigger than I thought, so it's gonna look amazing when it's built and painted. I just really like the color scheme as well. 
it looks great so this one's 145 points so not the most expensive as points go and for that you're going to get a range of five can take 15 damage with a toughness four and we've got two different weapons here so we've got the snakes which are going to be biting but they've got a range of two i guess because these are bigger than the serpents um four attacks strength four dealing two to four and a crit so that's a pretty impressive weapon and also here um a dart or is that venom i'm not sure what that's going to be let's find out in a minute but we've got a range of eight and that's um just one attack though with a strength three dealing one to three on a crit so i guess this is like the spitting venom maybe or it could be a poison dart i'll have a look and um, we get the extra ability here so let's check out the abilities now so again on a double we've got the poisoned weapon and on a quad the paralyzing venom and then this special ability here is on a triple the snake charmer pick a friendly fighter with the beast rune mark within four inches of this fighter that fighter can make a bonus attack action okay so that's referring to the serpents here so they you can pick the the serpents as long as they're within four inches of this fighter and then the serpents can make a bonus attack action and that's on a triple so if they're dealing one to four on a crit with five attacks and then you get a triple and they can make a bonus that's 10 dice you're rolling there with potential four damage just from a 65 point model and if you wanted to combine the points you'd be looking at um, 210 and you're getting a lot from those so that's a really great ability and that's our serpent caller and we've also got two uh, duplicate cards so if you wanted to have more of the clear bloods you've got those there so that's those all up this splintered fang war brand is really great i mean i love the miniatures the true blood the serpent caller the venom bloods they all look so cool and i think some of the abilities they get here are amazing the fanged buckler on a double is really good and that snake charmer triple combining the serpent caller with the serpents could be quite devastating and i think if you can get a kill with your true blood and then use the ensnaring net to hold back one of the bigger players so they can't move then bring in your serpent caller with serpents and then using a, a triple that's going to be like mental so you could really do some some huge damage here using those three tactically so i can't wait to get these built and painted look out for a video of that coming soon where i'll show you how i how i paint them and what scheme i use Let's take a look at the core book to see what it says about the introduction for the splintered fang. Here we go. And their motto is one cut, one kill. So that's cool with all the poison blades. Once they cut someone, it doesn't have to be a, a killing blow, but that poison's going to get in and do some awful damage. So let's read about the splintered fang. Unlike many warrior cults, the splintered fangs see no dishonour in the use of poison as a weapon. Indeed, it is perhaps their most vital asset. There is a ritualistic component to the brewing of their most lethal toxins overseen by shamans of the Coiling Ones. Demonic entities worshipped by the tribe as embodiments of cunning and strength. These mystics are regarded with awe by the warriors of the splintered fang, for they can command serpents with a thought, setting them upon their enemies in a slithering mass. Their blood rituals channel the power of chaos, bolstering the already formidable toxins of their serpent familiars with demonic power. In battle, the splintered fang favour impaling blades and barbed serrated weapons, the better to deliver their deadly gifts into the bloodstreams of their foes. They strike swiftly and score telling blows, then step back and circle their prey, allowing the poisons to do their terrible work. Victims die in agony, their flesh swelling and expanding, and their blood clotting like spoiled milk. Some are stricken by unnatural mutations, such as fangs and jagged scales as they burst from their bones and their flesh peels away like a shed skin. So that's pretty gross and awesome. Introduction to the splintered fang. And let's see what they look like all painted up. And here we go. They look really cool. Real kind of Greek 
gladiatorial and you can see them in action there looking deadly and I love that green colour awesome so that's the Splinter Fang and you can find that in the Warcry core book and that comes with both the original Warcry core set and the catacombs as well and you can also buy it separately again you can find a link to this warband set in the description below thanks so much for watching i hope this has helped you and given you an insight into the splintered fang please like if you like the video subscribe for more warcry content like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on tabletop skirmish games